but page nine in the workbook package, okay, you will see this graph here, right? And it is a velocity versus time graph, right? And there are, uh, there's one question underneath that to do with velocity versus time graphs. So before we get back into acceleration, that's what I would like you guys working on, okay? Um, I'll try and shrink that so it'll all fit on there. Okay. If you need to get closer, you can get closer. Okay. But that's how big I have to make it for it to all fit on there. Okay. Otherwise, just call it up on your phone. You can blow it up as big as you need to. All right. Why don't you guys working on that velocity versus time graph for right now? Then I'm going to walk through it with you, and then we'll move on to some more acceleration stuff. Okay, so um, for the first part, it wants the total displacement over the whole trip. So that's where we got to find all of our shapes. Okay, uh, so in thinking about it, I think I'm going to want uh, this rectangle here that goes all the way to 10 seconds. I don't want this triangle above it. I'm probably going to want this rectangle here and then the triangle above it. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, this big triangle here. And then I'll probably just want that triangle and yeah this triangle here okay should be able to just do that all right all right so uh, we got to find all the areas of all these shapes so this first uh, rectangle here is three high by 10 wide so it would be 30 meters right this one is three seconds wide and it is uh we're looking at nine tall goes from three to 12. Okay, so 9 times 3 is 27, divided by 2 is 13.5. Then we have this rectangle here, okay, that is 9 tall, and it is uh, 7 wide. Uh, so 9 times 7 is 63 meters. Uh, we have this triangle here that is uh, from 12 to 23, so it's 11 tall, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so it's 22 meters, and then this one is 28 tall. Oh, no, wait, that's not right. Sorry, that one's not 22. That goes from 12 to 28, so it's 16. Um, so 16 times 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 48 is 20, 40, 48, 24 meters. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and then this one's 28 tall by one, two, three and a half. 28 by 3.5 divided by two. Okay, so that one should be 49. And then this one is negative 12 by one and a half, 18, so it's nine, negative nine. And this one's seven by twelve. All right, so it's forty two. All right, so now I've got all my areas. Hopefully, you guys match up or at least close because sometimes it's hard to read the graph. Okay, so now we can add all of those up to get our total displacement here. So we'll have uh, 30 plus 13.5 plus 63 plus 24 plus 49 minus 9 minus 42. All right, so my total displacement is 128 and a half meters, right? Or something close to that anyway, okay? Um, and then our average velocity over the whole trip, how do I calculate that? Evan? Total displacement divided by total time, and my total time is 22 seconds. So I take this number that I just calculated and divide it by 22 seconds. So, sorry, this was 128.5. Okay. And my average velocity is going to be uh, positive 5.84. Positive 5.84 meters per second. This is meters. Okay. Um, for part C, average acceleration between 10 
and 15 seconds. So now we'll get rid of all of our shapes here. Okay, uh, 10 seconds starts right here, 15 seconds to here. Acceleration is VF minus VI over T. So my final uh, velocity is negative 12. My initial velocity was 28. And that took five seconds. Okay, so uh, negative 12 minus 28. Okay, divided by five, so, negative, so it's negative eight meters per second squared. Okay, questions on any of these so far? All right, and we worked on that formula yesterday, right, Evan? Question? Uh, in the end, it's still it's I, all I did was calculate this, which is basically the same thing. Is it? Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right, um, and then we have acceleration between six and ten seconds. So we're going to do the same thing. Okay, same formula. We're just going to have different numbers because it's between six and ten seconds now. So from six seconds to ten seconds. So at ten seconds, again, we're moving at twenty-eight. At times six seconds, we're moving at twelve. All right, so 28 minus 12 over 4 seconds, so that's 16 over 4, 4 meters per second squared. And this time it's positive. Okay. Uh, distance traveled between 0 and 10 seconds. Oh, I wish I hadn't erased all those triangles. Okay, uh, so between 0 and 10 seconds would be add up those uh, shapes that we had in here. So we'll have to draw, this one was 30. <laughs> oh, let's, let's be smart. goes back far enough. Okay, uh, so between 0 and 10 seconds, we have 30, 43 and a half, 106 and a half, 130 and a half, 130 and a half should be our distance between 0 and 10 seconds. Okay, um, average speed between 10 and 20 seconds. So we have to know how what our, dis, what our distance traveled was between 10 and and 20 seconds, so 20 seconds is over here, so we would take our distance here, distance here, and just to 20, okay? And we would add them together and divide by the time, by 10 seconds, okay? An acceleration between 13 and a half and uh, 22 seconds. So at 13 and a half seconds, okay? We're right there at zero, and then 22 seconds, zero. What's our acceleration during that time? Okay, remember, this is our formula. A equals VF minus VI over T. My final velocity is zero. My initial velocity is? Zero. What's my acceleration? Zero, yeah, guys. My VF was zero minus zero over, uh, what is it, nine and a half seconds or something like that. I mean, it doesn't matter. The top is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. Okay. My speed didn't change. It went from zero to zero. Right. Okay. Questions on how that one worked there? Everybody's good with that? Okay. All right. I want to look at this one. This is from your sheet, but it's about as complex as a acceleration and acceleration question would get. Okay. So uh, let's everyone write down the givens for this one first. Okay. We're reading this. A car is coasting backwards down a hill at negative three meters per second. So what did they just give me? They gave me initial velocity, right? Negative 3.0 meters per second. The driver gets the engine started, and after two and a half seconds, so they give me the time, the car is moving at positive four and a half. That means now up the hill, okay, at four and a half meters per second. All right, what is the average acceleration of the car? All right, so there's no manipulation. That part of the question is easy because I can just plug numbers in. But what I have to recognize is that these signs are important in this question. All right, 
So acceleration, as we've said before, is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. My final velocity is four and a positive four and a half meters per second. My initial velocity is negative three, so minus negative 3.0. Okay, and that took two and a half seconds. All right, so when I do this, I'm going to get 7.5 on the top and 2.5 on the bottom. So my average acceleration is positive 3.0 meters per second squared, or I should probably write 3.0 meters per second squared up the hill. Okay, and guys, this is going to seem really picky, but up and uphill are different. So are down and downhill. Downhill, here's my hill. This is downhill. This is down. They're different, okay? And that's gonna seem really picky, but when you get to like physics 20, it really makes a difference when you say down versus downhill. Same with up versus uphill. They are two different directions, okay? So keep that in mind. Any questions on how that one was done? All right, so what I want you guys working on here, I'm going to blow this back up, okay, is some more of the acceleration problems because tomorrow we're going to be doing an activity to do with acceleration. So we kind of are in velocity versus time graphs. So we need to be um, fairly proficient at using that. All right, so I think we left off yesterday with the fighter jet question. We just did question number five. All right, so make sure you've done three and four before you move on to these other ones here. All right, I'll make that a little bigger. Okay, if there's questions, please ask. Let's go through any together that you don't get. Okay, so don't be afraid. If you don't get how to do it, chances are there's a half a dozen other people who also don't get it. All right, so the, the issue with number four is um, we got big numbers, right? Okay, so we got to enter this like we did Avogadro's number on our calculator. Okay, so it's accelerated in a linear accelerator, which is like the, the large Hadrian Collider, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, the acceleration is 800 meters per second squared. And it can be that large because we're only accelerating a proton, which is tiny, right? Uh, so we're looking for how long it'll take the time to get from rest, so VI is zero, okay, to a final velocity of 2.5 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Okay, which is like getting close to the speed of light kind of fast. Right, so we have A equals VF minus VI over T, and we're looking for T. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T. So the T comes over to this side. I have to look for T when it's on the top. Then I'm going to divide both sides by A so that A comes over here. So I'm going to have the T equals 2.5 times 10 to the 8, my final velocity, minus my initial, which was 0, divided by... Uh, 800, okay, because that was my acceleration. Okay, so when I punch that in, I'm going to have the 2.5 times 10 to the 8 in brackets, so 2.5 E8, okay, divided by 800. All right, so it's going to take 312,500 seconds. That's 86 hours a long time it's like 3.6 days yeah, it's a long time okay but it would take a long time even for a, a proton to approach the speed of light okay that's why we have so much trouble getting spacecraft okay or even theoretically getting spacecraft to the speed of light we can't accelerate a proton to the speed of light in under three and a half days okay? so it takes quite a while All right and the other one's giving us trouble seven uh, what's the context of seven, sorry? It's the car slowing This one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and it says one on here. I'm not sure what the numbers are going. Okay, uh, so we have, it slows from 22 to three. So which one of those is the initial? 22, All right, okay. 22 is our initial, because it's slowing from that to three meters per second. Okay, so VI and VF are set up that way. Our acceleration is negative 
2.1 meters per second squared. It has to be because the question specifically says it's slowing down. That's a negative acceleration, right? So again, we're looking for time. It's the same manipulation as the proton question. Okay, we're going to multiply both sides by T and then divide both sides by A okay, and have this. So time will be uh, 3 minus 22. So we get a negative number on top divided by negative 2.1. Okay, negative number on the bottom, that'll give us a positive time, right? Uh, so we have 19, um, 19 over 2.1, negative 19. Right, so we should get nine seconds. Right. Make sense? So including those signs is important, right? Okay, any other ones giving us trouble? Okay, keep going. Yep. Mm-hmm.